Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. In this episode, we're going to explore the eight main noise reduction systems applied to tape. Are you ready guys? Let's get to it. Go! Okay guys, so in this episode, we're finally going to take a look, we're going to discuss about the eight main solutions to reduce noise in tape recording, audio tape recording, uh, whatever it is, cassettes, reel to reel, anything that it's involving magnetic oxide. Okay guys, so before diving in this though, I think it's useful to discuss uh, just briefly about the issue, the main issue, noise. So the first thing I want to uh, take into account is the concept of the single to noise ratio. I don't know if you have checked the specs, for example, of uh, a, a cassette deck, a reel to reel recorder or whatever. Sometimes it expressed in or dynamic range, but that's wrong. Actually, the, the concept of dynamic range, the lowest and the loudest peak in the in music of a, of a specific track is usually associated to the single to noise ratio but there are two different things actually why when why do we check this this ratio because obviously we want to know how strong is the signal in relationship with the noise the stronger it is obviously the better it is the more dynamic range you're going to have with the reproduction of your music so but we want to focus on the concept of noise. What is noise, noise floor? Well, in this particular context that we're talking about tape, we may have three main types of noise going around in our, in our signal there that are ruining also a little bit the, the quality of our reproduction. Well, we have noise just picked up from the mics, from the ambience. So when the artist went to record its music, it also picked up the, 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 just the noise that normally things produce. The, the, the microphone itself is going to introduce, introduce that. In fact, be, be, besides ambience the noise, we also have electronic noise introduced by all the different components during recording, but also during playback and also during the, the, the recording of our music on our decks. I mean, in all passages, the, the gear is going to give that imprint, unfortunately. Plus, our third part is obviously, as you can imagine, and that's the main issue here, tape hiss. Yes, tape hiss. What is tape hiss? Well, tape hiss is introduced every time you play or record, obviously, something on your tape. It, it is inherent in the tape. What is it, actually? What is hiss? What, what is it coming from? Well, actually, it's the particles of the oxide on the film of your tape that somehow are not properly or are not magnetized. So, hence, you will hear that. Bad quality tape with particles that are rather coarse or big, which are not properly magnetized, you're going to hear that. That's why when you buy high quality tape or when you go with fine metal particles and type 4 types of tape, your, the hiss is going to be much lower. The noise is going to be much lower. So that's why you should try to look for high quality tapes or even uh, type 4 or even type 2 cassettes. Absolutely. Things get much, much better. But as we have seen in the last video, here's the link. Uh, even a type 1 cassette can deliver excellent results. No, no, no doubts on that. So... What is, the, what is uh, a noise reduction system? Uh, there, are, there are several. We're going to go, we're going to take a look at the main eight ones produced in the past century and still active, actually. Um, a noise reduction system should have the purpose of reducing that type of noise, introduce that type of noise, especially tape hiss. Uh, we're going to take a look at a specific type of noise reduction because there are various types of noise reduction systems we're going to take a look at the so-called 
dual-ended systems. Uh, what, what is that? Simply because the process is subdivided into phases, where we have a pre-emphasis and a de-emphasis. But we'll take a look at that in a while. I'm going to try to summarize what's happening when we use a noise reduction system. Afterwards, we're going to take a look at the types. So the main concept is actually the same for all. We're taking the, uh, the signal, which is then encoded somehow, according to the different types, the signal at that point is encoded and it is compressed. That's why these noise reduction systems are called companders, which is a word that includes compression and expansion. These two concepts, compression and expander, compander. In fact, the first phase of compression where we have an encoding of the signal and a pre-emphasis after, afterwards, when there is a playback of that recording, we're going to have a de-emphasis and obviously an expansion of that of that signal this is the general uh, situation uh, so we have these two phases actually what is actually happening why is the noise reduction system able to eliminate a part at least uh, with different kinds of solutions as we will see that darn hiss that darn noise what is what is happening well, very simply, now let's take a look also at these images I'm going to put on. We're going to have the signal, it's going to be, as I said, compressed, which means that the soft, high frequencies are going to be increased in their volume, okay? In fact, when you put a cassette and you just listen it, if it has Dolby B or C, for example, and you do not press Dolby B and C, you're going to hear those um, those high frequencies, the treble, very harsh. That's what's happening, in fact. We are elevating the volume of those signals. What's happening, though? During this process, you're also adding hiss together with it, okay? Together with it, in the, in the compressed signal. When you decode and you de-emphasize that signal during playback and you press that little button for the Dolby or DBX or whatever you're using, at that point, we have an expansion of the, of the signal. And fortunately, at that point, what happens? Those high tone, those high frequencies, the soft ones that were emphasized, that were brought at a higher volume, are reduced in order to bring them back at the normal volume that were recorded with. But what happens? You're also reducing the volume of the hiss. That is the trick. Lowering the volume at that point of the hiss, uh, it's going to be masked, first of all, from those frequencies. They're also already taking away part of the hiss. And at the same time, you're also reducing that volume, which was at the normal volume during the compression. But then you reduce it. And that's why, magic, you don't have that much hiss anymore. You're always going to have a little bit, but it's greatly reduced. Oh, boy. Okay, guys, let's go and take a look at the eight main types. Go for it. Okay, um, I obviously gonna have to read a few specs here because there's a lot to say. So take your time to watch this video. Let's start. Our first type of noise reduction system. Obviously, we have to start with Dolby, which the first uh, implementation, the first type of reduction was Dolby A, invented in 1965 by Ray Dolby, which actually just died a few years ago. It's incredible. I mean, the the impact that this guy, the inventor of this system, actually, the founder of the of Dolby Laboratories and this system is amazing and it's still living. As you all know, ever heard about Dolby Atmos? It's the same thing. It's the same company that is still doing things for audio and especially movie theaters, video games, effects in that, in that terms. Not anymore, well, not that much, at least, in music audio. But Dolby Atmos actually sometimes is, is also adopted in this, in this type of, uh, of usage. Okay, so let's get back to Dolby A. Now, Dolby A was a professional type of noise reduction system. You're not going to find Dolby A on a cassette deck you need to buy some special dedicated equipment if you want, because you can introduce in your chain a Dolby A 
a card if you want. No problem for each channel. The same is done also for reel-to-reel -reel recorders. So Dolby A is very sophisticated. That's why it's not used also in a, a normal cassette deck because it's very, very expensive. And it's um, it affects, it takes place, we could say, on four main bands, which does not happen in cheaper types of no Dolby noise reduction or other noise reductions. So we're going to have an increase, and that's the good part of, uh, maybe I forgot to highlight this. When we have that de-emphasis, we also increase the dynamic, or the overall dynamic range, actually the signal to noise ratio. And according to the types of uh, noise reduction system, the, the overall signal is acquiring a higher dynamic range in, in, this, in this sense. That's why and that is so cool that we are storing our, on our cassettes a very normal system, a compressed signal. But when, if you're using these types of noise reduction systems, obviously, but when you play it back with these systems, obviously you're going to have a greater signal to noise ratio and giving back life sometimes through the recordings, having a, a, an excellent signal to noise ratio, which sometimes it can match or even go higher than a CD. Oh boy, you'll see that. Okay, so with Dolby A, we have, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to read guys because I, I can't memorize all of this. We have a 10 dB increase in dynamic range among the 20 Hertz and the nine kilohertz. All the way up to 20 dB, you're gonna gain 20 dB within the uh, bandwidth of 9 kilohertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. Where is the Dolby A, the noise reduction system, taking place? As I said, four, three, four main bands. The first one, it's almost like a low pass filter that goes around 20, 80 hertz. The second band is a pass filter which goes from the 80 hertz all the way to the three kilohertz range. The third band goes from, this is a high pass filter, from three kilohertz all the way up to nine kilohertz. And the last, the fourth band, again, a high pass filter, which goes around nine kilohertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. So it's really, uh, active, effective on almost all the spectrum. And that's why it's such a good type of noise reduction. Better than the other ones, actually. Okay, this is 1965 and Dolby A will continue until the end of tape. Oh boy, in professional environment. Okay, let's proceed now to our second type of noise reduction. Which one? As you can imagine, Dolby A. B, which was introduced just a few after, just a few years after, in 1968. Now, Dolby B is one of the worst, I might say, sound noise reduction systems. I mean, it's just a cheap uh, solution that was rapidly implemented in consumer products after the success of Dolby A. But obviously, it does not have that refinement that um, we could say dedicated technology at, at this large bandwidth spectrum that Dolby A had. In fact, we just have a, a short of 9, 10 dB gain in, in, um, in dynamic range and signal to, noise ra signal to noise ratio, which starts around 300 hertz and goes uh, slightly above 4 kilohertz. So, not that much, not that effective. Unfortunately, this solution, Dolby B, is broadly used practically in the, I don't know, I would say 95% of pre-recorded cassettes. So, unfortunately, again, another weak point in pre-recorded cassettes. The worst type of uh, noise reduction system was implemented. Why? Because it was cheap. It was cheap to put it in the consumer decks. And that's the, 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 the magic trick why we have that Dolby B everywhere. If you do not read, on your, if you take a normal uh, pre-recorded cassette and you just see Dolby, you can be sure it's Dolby B. Okay, let's proceed. We have to wait all the way down to 1980 to have a new 
solution, our third uh, noise reduction system. What am I talking about? Dolby C. Now, Dolby C is much better than Dolby B, and it's very similar, we could say, to Dolby A, although not as good. Dolby A is better. In any case, you're never going to find that in a tape deck. You do going to find Dolby C. Oh boy, that's very easy to find, actually. Here we have an increase around 15 to 20 dB in the signal-to-noise ratio. Um, I, one thing I forgot to say is that all these Dolby systems have a 2 to 1 type of compression. So we have a, 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 a signal that is around 2, it will be reduced to 1 and then, then again expanded at 2, okay? This is the ratio through all Dolby types. Actually, through all, almost all of them, only other types that we will see at the end have a different ratio in that sense. Okay, let's go back to Dolby C, which is quite complicated. Now, uh, here we have also new types of technology implemented in the, 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 the circuits that are affecting, that are changing, modifying our signal. What is that? We have the so-called spectral skewing, where we have, the, which practically it affects the high frequencies, which are slightly reduced, in order to dedicate more uh, a precise control of the mid frequencies, besides all the normal noise sound reduction in the in the lower in the soft high frequencies, we also have this control on the uh, volume of the high frequencies, which in this case will, as I said, deliver uh, um, an optimal solution also on the mid frequencies. Good treatment. Together with uh, spectral skewing, we also have anti-saturation, which is something very similar. It's the same concept, although applied to the levels, to the volumes, to the recording levels. So again, we have an optimization of uh, the recording level, so we don't have distortion, we don't have, or at least it's greatly reduced. These are two fundamental aspects of Dolby uh, C, which, as I said, are not present, not even in Dolby A. Where is uh, Dolby C actually present? Well, mainly in two bands. The first band goes from 400 hertz all the way one, all the way up to one kilohertz, while the second band is effective at beyond we could say one kilohertz, as you can imagine. So we have a, a a good range, a very broad range. Okay, after that we finally reach our fourth um, noise reduction system. Again, by Dolby in 1990, we have Dolby. S, which is, uh, according to several people, and uh, I think it's rather objective, Dolby S is the best of the best among the Dolby Laboratories noise reduction systems. What happened? Unfortunately, though, uh, it it was mm, presented to the public just a little too late in the '90s, where cassettes were already going deep down and CDs were going. Up, 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 up and above in sales. So we practically have a first stage of development of Dolby S. We don't have, a, we, can only, we, we, we could almost say a beta of Dolby S, not the full um, polished version of Dolby S. So that's why some people think that Dolby S is not that good because it's not that effective. It wasn't present that long enough in order to be developed properly and have a good version of that. Okay, I mean, whatever. Maybe it's true. Nevertheless, it is a great noise reduction system. We have all the way up to 24 dB of gain. So, I mean, the dynamic range is really, really getting excellent at, that, at this point. Again, we have the spectral skewing and anti-saturation. We also have modulation control, which was implemented here, which practically keeps the levels of the bands where they should be, okay? There's a control in that, in that phase. Plus, these bands are not only sliding, that's how you call them in all these types of Dolby uh, noise reduction systems, but also fixed. And the presence of these uh, bands uh, in this control of the sliding, but also fixed bands, 
is that you're greatly reducing, I don't know if you ever heard about the pumping effect, the breathing effect, which unfortunately does happen in some types of uh, noise reduction systems, sometimes aversions, because please remind, this is important, I forgot to say, not all Dolby, whatever it is, B, C, A, S, chips, are good. I mean, they're not all at the same level. There are good Dolby, I don't know, S, C, chips, very high quality, and there are also crappy circuits dedicated to this type of noise reduction. Okay, this is valid for all types of noise reduction. It's not that if a deck has Dolby B, it's the same to a high-end or a low-end deck. No. A high-end deck is going to have a proper, high-quality Dolby B sound or no, no, um, noise reduction system. While instead a crappy deck, it's not going to have that quality. So be careful also of that. That's also why you need to, I think, you should try to look for high-quality decks. In any case, let's go back to our Dolby S. So uh, I was talking about the pumping and breathing effect. What happens? Well, sometimes, I don't know if you ever heard that, uh, Obviously, the, 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 the chip, the electronics, are trying to follow what's happening in the signal. And sometimes, when all of a sudden there is a silence in the music, obviously the, 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 the noise reduction system is trying to elevate that sound. And as soon as the sound comes in, it reduces it. So you're going to hear that oh, come up and down. That's why they call it <sighs> breathing, because it almost seems that in these soft or almost silent passages, you're, you're, listening, you're hearing the volume going up and down and obviously the noise. <coughs> that's, that's a defect actually, so we have to be very careful. And obviously introducing these new technologies, things are getting better. Again, Dolby S goes mainly on two bands. The first one goes from 400 hertz all the way up and instead band 2 goes, and this is also an, um, something new, goes from 200 hertz down, okay? So 200 hertz up the first band, 200 hertz down. What is the, the novelty here? Well, we're dedicating also noise reduction systems at the lower frequencies. That's something that we haven't seen that much up until now. Uh, well, obviously in Dolby A there was something like that, but uh, I think in Dolby S is a little more effective and dedicated to that aspect. Okay, these are the main types of noise reduction for uh, Dolby. Now, finally, we can pass to one of the best, if not maybe the best type of noise reduction. What am I talking about? DBX. So for our fifth noise reduction system we have in 1971 the creation of dbx by um david blackmer which is interesting because he invented this solution in uh mainly applied in medical in, in a medical environment uh to to the electric signal which may disturb patients but he d un understand that this was fantastic it could was you it could have been used applied also in audio and other applications so a great praise for for this guy and we have three main types i'm just going to put them together there'll be one dbx1 dbx2 dbx3 there are also other types but these are the one main ones dedicated to audio and um, in contrast with dolby the best one is dbx1 the other ones are simpler we could say more uh, simple solutions and cheaper solutions of dbx1 so be careful. Don't think DBX3 is the best. No, no, it's cheaper. Okay, but it's not not the best. The one to go for if it's indicated is DBX1. A lot of times you're not going to find any indication whatsoever. Again, we have a ratio of two to one. And what is the good part of DBX is that here we have an increase of 30 d b in the signal noise ratio all right guys the dynamic range here is very very good a lot of people think that dolby a is better because it it's activated it, it it's affecting four distinct bands uh, with dedicated electronics it's much more sophisticated actually 
DBX No, it's just one band and it goes from 30 hertz all the way up to 15 kilohertz. So it depends. The overall results, I think, are amazing, phenomenal, stellar. I think DBX is the best solution, actually. Although you do have to pay attention. I mean, you need a high quality circuitry. And sometimes, especially in the earlier version, there was this... Uh, DBX does suffer from this breathing, this pumping effect. So you have to pay attention also to what type you're choosing. The cool part uh, <clears throat> is that this was also implemented in, uh, in vinyl records. Yes, in fact, there are tape decks, like for example, um, some uh, Technic, Technics models, where you can insert the uh, the signal of your vinyl records, which were encoded in DBX, send it through the tape deck or a dedicated DBX decoder, obviously, and enjoy a high, an extreme dynamic range of vinyl records. Techmone did a, a fantastic uh, video on this, so um, I'll put the link here below in the video description. Okay, so after Dolby, after DBX, we have our third company and actually our sixth uh, noise reduction system. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Telefunken. Yes, the German company, in fact, developed its own, and according to several people, the best types of noise reduction systems. The first one was invented in 1975 and is the Telcom C4. In fact, it comes from the uh, Telefunken compander. This was mainly employed in the professional environment. You're not going to find Telcom C4 on a cassette deck, that's for sure. Here we have a, a different kind of, uh, of ratio. It usually was 1.5 to 1, while instead DBX and Dolby was 2 to 1 in the, ex in the compression. In a special version of Telcom, although, we reached 2.5 to 1. So... A very strong compression. Here we have, similar to DBX, 30 dB. In, uh, it's acquiring 30 dB in the signal to noise ratio. Very, very good. Also, let's not talk only numbers, guys. We're talking also about quality. That's why a lot of people like the quality of the uh, processing of Telcom more than DBX and Dolby. Uh, it could reach, in fact, it could, it could have add, that's what I found this information in manuals, it could add the half of the uh, signal-to-noise ratio of a specific machine. For example, if we have a 70 dB signal-to-noise ratio, take half of that, add it, the final result would have been 105 dB of signal-to-noise ratio. Incredible. Okay, uh, Telcom... C4 acted, similar to Dolby A, on four main bands. The first one was going as a low-pass filter on the 215 hertz. The second band went from 215 hertz all the way up to uh, 1450 hertz. The third band from uh, 1.45 kilohertz all the way up to 4.8 kilohertz in the last and fourth band from 4.8 kilohertz all the way up and above then that's a high pass filter so apart from this type which as i said was dedicated to the professional environment very soon telefunken and a few other um, brands implemented a consumer version which is also known as HICOM. HICOM was introduced, the first, the first type, HICOM 1, we could call it, in 1978. And this has a ratio 2 to 1. Again, in the, in the earlier version, it does suffer a little bit from the pumping and breathing effect. Here, we, although, uh, in contrast with the Telcom C4, we have a 15, 20 dB increase. Good, but not amazing, not as the Telcom C4. Uh, and this acted on just one single broadband, going from 1.2 kilohertz all the way up to 8.6 kilohertz. So not that much, actually. In fact, uh, after just one year, 
a HICOM 2 version in 1979 was created and presented again more for a prosumer we could say environment and here we had a little better uh, signal to noise ratio which was going bring it up to an increase of 20 25 db and this in this case we had it was fixed on two bands the the the, the pre-emphasis and the emphasis just simple two bands <coughs> There were also other high conversions, but they were never presented to the broad public. So this was our eighth and final one. These are all the main types of solutions. What I can say about the Telefunken ones is that unfortunately, apart from one or two models, they were mainly implemented in medium quality decks. A lot of people is not, are not going to agree with this. Obviously, mainly the Telefunken decks, which are good, but they're still more in within the 70s kind of electronics and display which i as we all know the golden age of tape if we're talking about cassettes is the 80s so i tend to prefer the dolby systems which have a great evolution great development i mean that that does count or dbx which actually i must admit that when it's perfectly working excellent compression and excellent decoding and de-emphasis i mean that's top notch for me Woo! okay guys well i hope you enjoyed this video please leave your comments here below please give me your other ideas and if you want to chime in on other noise reduction solutions because there are many others even phillips invented his own for example but i think these were the main ones and dedicated obviously to tape that I wanted to discuss with you. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, music is born analog. Well guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.